Yeah. Thank you. Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Yuji Maxtomi from uh, Center for Climate Change and Adaptation at the uh, National Institute for Environmental Studies. And today I would like to, in, in the morning session, I would like to just introduce the briefly introduce the Asia Pacific Climate Change Adaptation Information Platform, which is called the AP Plat. And then the objective of the AP Plat is the bridging science and stakeholder. Okay. Because of, uh, our I'm a researcher on I'm a researcher on the climate change impact and adaptation, and then yes, research institute is always producing scientific results, scientific evidence, and then how to deliver this kind of scientific information, scientific research into the uh, policy maker mm -hmm. or stakeholder. That is our, our job. And if you practice the one to, to reach the science and uh, stakeholder. And first, I'd like to uh, briefly introduce the, what is AP Prat. AP Prat is, yeah, uh, long name. Uh, as a plastic climate change adaptation information platform. Okay. But just info, what is the information? It is a little bit difficult. Yes, just a web page, web page. And then the EPIC product provides a wide range of uh, information on climate change and also impact and adaptation. And it was established in 2019 and they are mainly operated by the National Institute for Environmental Study, my institute, and the MOEJ Ministry of the Environment, Japan, and the Institute for Global Environmental Study, the IHS. And then, yes, the mission, the most important mission is to support the science-based decision-making and effective climate change adaptation measure in all over, uh, over in the Pacific region. And then you will see that this is the, uh, the top page of the AP plot. And then uh, this is, uh, you can access, of course, and then you can get uh, a lot of wide range of information on the climate change adaptation. And then we have uh, three uh, main activities. First one is uh, two developments. So I will uh, explain that later. Uh, we have developed a similar uh, tool for the, uh, uh, which is useful for the adaptation planning and also your decision making. And also uh, we are providing scientific information because uh, we are research institute. So that we, are, uh, we uh, deliver, we, we deliver a scientific information to the uh, policy maker and stakeholders. That is one of the most important uh, activity. And also capacity development. Like, this is capacity development is most important. And then also, yes, this is one of the capacity development activity of okay. And you can see that, yes. Uh, now you can see that this is a picture of the, the concept of the EPIPRAT. And then here is science and the stakeholder. And then you can see that's a very strange shape. And but this is a, uh, we can imagine that uh, bridge. And then in Japan, I was born in this city, Hiroko City. And then this kind of strange shape, uh, which is still is, still exists in uh, my hometown. In the work city in Japan. So I think I recommend to visit this uh, bridge and uh, when you visit uh, Japan. But uh, yes, most important thing is yes, so the bridge is uh, based on the tool development, scientific information, the capacity form. And then by using this bridge, we hope to bridge the between science and stakeholders. That is the main concept of the AP project. And yes, AP project. Uh, this is a, uh, uh, due to the time limitation, I cannot uh, explain the all functions, all the tools, uh, all the information that we can But uh, yes, this is a full page, and then GIS, we, we also provide uh, GIS based uh, uh, information. Yes, and then later I will explain that uh, uh, this tool. And in the afternoon, I will have a uh, uh, training, work, train, hands on training on this uh, tool. And also, we have an uh, impact viewer, and then through this impact viewer, you can get uh, in, uh, the central, central information, central impact, climate change impact information by using impact viewer. But uh, due to time limitation, I cannot explain that in the whole truth. And also, yes, uh, capacity development is one of the main activity of the AP product. And then we have an uh, e learning course on the AP product web page. And then, yes, we had uh, we had a training work, many training work. For, Workshop in person and online. And also, uh, we are uh, uh, providing guidebook on the post for the 
example, uh, demonstration planning and through development and then to uh, uh, this year proposal making or innovation. Yeah, so uh, if, you're, if you're interested in the AP project activity, so we, we can organize our friendly workshop for you too. So please contact me. And yes, in the, in the uh, morning session, I'd like to briefly introduce uh, the main tool, one of the main tools of the AP project, which is called Find Test. Find test. And it, in the morning, I just briefly introduce, and then in the afternoon, I would like to uh, have uh, hands on training on this tool. And uh, yes, Prime Test is a uh, uh, six climate projection tool. And the main concept of Prime Test is a climate projection for all, all people. All people means including stakeholder, uh, policy maker, mother, father. Grandfather, grandfather, my children, my daughter, elementary school student, graduate student, undergraduate student, and dog and cats and <laughs> like this. So, so climate projection for all. We hope to deliver the climate projection for all people. Okay. And then sub concept, how to do this? Quick and easy access, most important function of this climate. Okay. So, so we can imagine, yes, the quick and easy access. So you can easily access to the McDonald's fast food shop, but you, it is difficult to access a French coast, French coast restaurant. But practice is like a fast food shop. So when, when you are hungry and then when you should have a food immediately as soon as possible, and you go to the fast food shop, like a Kentucky Fried Chicken. And in your activity, in your work, yes, you need uh, some climate projection. Uh, how to get uh, how how to get such kind of future climate projection? And you can go to the plant test, and you can get like a fast food shop. Okay, so quick and easy access, like a fast food shop, is very important function of the plant test. Okay, and I will show you. I will show you now. So the important thing is so when uh, in your activity, I think uh, you need a future climate projection in your planning, in your work, in your activity, and in your, in your research, in your study. Do you know future projection increase in your activity? For example, more deeply. I think a very important and basic question. Future climate, future temperature increase in your city. Do you know? <laughs> Next question, how do you get such kind of information? Of course, the IPCC report provides such kind of, this kind of data, but very low area. What is it? Your city. Your city's temperature increase or precipitation change, maximum temperature, uh, minimum temperature. How do you get this kind of information in your work? And then what is the fastest and sorry, uh, fastest and easiest way? I give you, I give you. Prime just provides such kind of six. Cmip six is the latest future climate projection. By only two steps, okay? So I do not tell you about difficult things. I just very simple things. Only two steps you can get the latest future climate projection there, like a fast food shop, right? Like a Kentucky Fried Chicken or McDonald's. Okay. I would like to show you actually. Maybe I think you can now connect to the internet and just. Brian Cast. Brian Moore Cast. Brian Moore. Of course, you can get, you can. Brian Moore Cast. <coughs> Yeah, step level is uh, access. Step level is access. 
And this, this is the front page of the crime guys. And uh, in the afternoon, I will have a, we will have a hands-on training. So now you don't need to access this. But this is the front page. And the step there, I'm sorry, step there, this one, just access. And the first steps, area setting. So you should select your country, your city, your town, in the area, area setting. In this case, yes, I select Maldives. Maldives. Maybe here? Just do it. And this is the first step. And next, just click Reboot since we download. Down. That's no. Maldive is the temperature increase in Maldive in 2051 to 2060 is 1.7 degree. That's all. Now you get the future climate projection data only by two steps. Oh, I think this is uh, this. Sure, sure. CDP6 data. Uh, this record is based on the CDP6 data. Latest, latest future projection. This is the, uh, in, the, in the morning session, just introduction. So if you, your interest is the most important. If you're interested in this one, I think it, it's good. It'll be great. Yes, what is the baseline for the summit period? Best period, uh, 1981 to, to start. Yes, 90, 90, 1981 to, to start. So that means in 50 years, there is an increase of 1.0. Yes, that's true. But, but now you can see that uh, this is uh, the highest emission scenario. This is P3, so that's true. And then, of course, we can change, we can select different scenario and also different uh, this is the average uh, ensemble being private model projection yeah. but uh, we also can select we also can select the specific climate data, climate model data. but uh, yes today in the morning session that's all so in the afternoon i will introduce uh, how to use this uh, data and this tool and uh, how to combine this tool with into the uh, post -making. Okay, so that's all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so bring my agenda. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the next time the agenda is the hands on training. Uh, so, considering the number, I think the number of computers here is enough for everybody to have one in front of them. You can do the hands-on training here today. You don't need to go to the computer lab. Uh, so if I can come over and I'm going to stop sharing. And I would like to ask our uh, online participants to give us about a uh, few minutes. So from this point, uh, do you want to keep the uh, online session on or do you want to stop? Because it's in person training, but up to you. You think that you want to see us? They can follow. Uh, there's no harm. Okay, so we're going to keep the uh, basically session going. If anybody online is interested to uh, listening, you're welcome to do so since we are now moving to the other room. And we, had, uh, and we conduct the online session here as well. For those people that are interested in the uh, next session, uh, we will see you at, uh, what will be the time for the next session? 1130. 11.30 for experience sharing uh, on how Maldives is planning on translating the disaster and climate data uh, and tools into policy and action, 11.30 Maldives. Thank you. Uh,
I think everybody has uh, the link to the portal. So the links are on the other computer, so you have to tell us what you need to. So just search risk and resilient portal, let's go. Yeah. Uh, we would uh, go from the main page. Yeah. So everybody has this page open in front of all of you. Yeah. So uh, we enter the portal with a data explorer. And I was explaining yesterday as well. When we go into the data explorer, it actually shows the original data sets uh, which we have uh, in the portal. And the structure of the portal is very similar to uh, that we have for Maldives as well. So to view the Maldives page, uh, please go to Geo and uh, click here Maldives. This is the easiest way. Um, and then uh, under Maldives, uh, we can go to the decision support system. Yeah. So we all have a uh, modest space. If anyone has any trouble, any, any confusion, just raise your hand and ask questions so that I can go at it. Yeah, you go to more of the you click on the three dots and then go to decision support system. To go to Molly's page, you need to click on the three dots beside Molly's and go to and choose decision support system. Any issues? Get to Molly's page. Do we all have Molly's page in front of us? Or not. 
you can try doing that. If there is any issue, just let me know. If it's not zooming into the talk, you want to uh, Can you all do that? Yeah? Yeah, you could all do that? Can you switch on a different computer laptop, maybe? Yeah, yeah, because yeah, you also have the same issue. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> so let's let's try to select. Uh, we zoom out first. And then it's a, it's nice and interesting that when you zoom out, the island then names vanishes, so it's, it's easy to view uh, the entire scenario. Uh, but when you zoom in, the island names actually appear. Let's try to uh, let's try to understand what is what this this map actually telling you. So can anybody tell me? I think you all all uh, attended this uh, this session. Can can anyone tell me what this map is, tells us actually? Okay. Yes, baseline. How do you know? Sorry? Yeah. Yes. Also, there is an easy way as well to know if which scenario it is. Can anyone tell me? What which scenario it is? Can anyone tell me? Uh, how to how to understand? Anyone? Yeah, northern area, yes. That is the interpretation. But can, can anyone tell me which scenario it is showing and which hazard it is showing? Go to hazard. Go to hazard. But there is an easy, easier way. They are next to more. Yes, on the header. Yes. If you look at the header here, so it tells you what hazard it is and what scenario it is. It's very simple. And uh, if you want to change it, so let's start from guided tour because it gives you some help to choose the scenario. Let's take, uh, yeah, the, the one you take told that it is likely saying that the, the northern at all, uh, they, they might face you know, higher uh, intensity in terms of multi hazard, they have higher weight. Let's try to change some of the scenarios and see what they are telling you. For example, Let's go to SSB 3, 2021, 2040. And uh, who can tell me what this map is telling us? Who can tell me what this map is telling us? Is that it? Yeah, I just want, want the volunteer from you all. Anyone, please raise your hand and tell me. Anyone? Everybody could see the face? No. No? Who could not see the face? This area is near future. I mean, I mean, not not very present, but it's yes. not beyond because it's from 2040. 2040, right? And then this SSP3. It should be close to observations. Yeah. Sorry? It should be more closer to observations. Yes. Uh, but the, what does the maps, the colors tell us? Multi of the yes, multi of the prediction. Yes, that's what he, he has already told. But what does the map tell us? Allah says the, yeah. the serial of the regime. Yes. And how what, what does it tell actually which at all? How do you know the colors? How do you relate it to the map? Sorry, the scale is displayed on the right side. So there is a legend. Here there is a legend. Legend. Yes, this is called legend. This is a very important part of the map if you want to read any any kind of map. You have to look into the legend and understand what the colors are telling you actually. So one thing uh, I hear some people saying opacity is only the basically level of transparency of the legend. And the use is if you want to add more layers, sometimes you need less transparency so that you can be able to see the other layer because this is dark red, 
and it's going to impact your visual uh, visibility to see the next layers like land cover that comes into uh, the picture as well. So opacity doesn't show really the degree of the hazard. It's just the level of the intensity of the color that you see for all of the different colors that you have in the map. Yeah, you see, as we increase the opacity, you can check out if you increase the opacity, how do you see the color? If you decrease the opacity, how do you see the color? And if it is, if the opacity is zero, you don't see anything. Like if you just only want to see uh, other layer, for example, land use on on the boundaries, with the boundaries of the country, then you might uh, want to reduce the opacity to zero so that you can see the other layer most clearly. So yeah. So what does the color uh, say? Yes, the legend, we can understand uh, what does the color says. And there are three different colors. If we see the entire country, the southern at all actually showing uh, less darker color. That means the multi hazard score is between six to eight. If we go a little bit north, north, uh, northwards, then we see a bit darker color, which means that if the, the score is between 9 to 12 and on the on the you know uh, most northern parts and some parts here here uh, is the darkest which means uh, 13 to 15 the score is 13 to 15 higher the score higher is the probability or density of multi hazards uh, in the in that box so we can we can try and see which scenario uh, will have uh, and which areas will have the highest intensity, so if you could change the scenarios from here to here, uh, you can see how the uh, intensities uh, of, of, of multi-hazard are changing across the country. Can you all do that and, and, and check by yourself? It's not just Seeing the map also giving the numbers as well because you know for, for this scenario you see it's only up to 12. You go here so it's coming up to 15. So the intensity are changing yeah increasing uh, any question if you if you if you don't remember, uh, do I have the presentation from yesterday? What are you trying to show? Yes, to this presentation. Let me do it from my side. What was the title? Okay. If I did. Oh, it doesn't open it. Thank <laughs> you. 
what, what, what you see and then change the scenario to a different one and tell me what we will do. So maybe we choose two, three people that tell us what's their actual and then what change they see in the scenario so that it's getting better or worse. Who wants to tell me? Any volunteer? Yeah. Anyone? Can you tell us? Would you like to tell us? No, do we start from one area? Can you check the one area and tell us in terms of multi hazard between the baseline and let's say SSP3 long term? How much change we are expecting to see? So, how much was it in baseline? So, in baseline, model was six to eight. In SSP three, long term or short term? Short term was ten hundred. Eight. SSP to the long term? Nine to four. So compared to the other islands in SSP three. Yeah, so long term for now is because they're already moving forward. So here the longest has zero yeah. Anyone else? So what about one of the northern islands for us? Yeah, we need to Can you just pull the question? Just go there. Because if you look yeah, at the overall factor, the situation is a bit worse. I mean, a lot worse in the north compared to the south where the most factor is. Yeah, but this one is just fine at all from top and bottom.
and why do you need this kind of information? Because if one bar bar that gets shut down, uh, many islands might have one or two islands, uh, one or two bar banks, but if they, they are shut down, uh, then how much, you know, uh, power can be there? Uh, so, we can speak. So the size of the circle here is the capacity of the power plants. Yeah. So if it's a smaller, a smaller capacity, bigger, it's a bigger power plant. And that becomes important if there's a flood or something. One of the things that, for example, happened in Canada, uh, in autumn of 2018, there was a, a storm that uh, didn't affect the city as much. Only like one neighborhood was destroyed, but it went right through the power plant that we have, and it destroyed it. And it took us a few days to get connected to Toronto and, and to be able to, you know, bring back uh, power to the whole Ottawa city. And that was like, because over there, like everything is with electricity, gas is not really used, right? So then you start realizing the nightmare of the stream connected and the importance of that few days, because like in a temperature close to like uh, 510, then you don't have any gas, you don't have any, you know, oven, nothing. Uh, no hot water, anything, anything. It's like, a, and then just how to which which power plants are most suitable to provide for the city and how much. That was like the thing that uh, can help in this kind of situation. If you have a big power plant and there might be like some danger, what are the first kind of locations or options that you can try to connect or uh, find a way to basically replace it or supplement until uh, further actions are uh, taken or if you want to make the new power plants, what are the locations based on the projection information uh, or the data available? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, like if you're moving to other type of energies, then this becomes very important because uh, if you are looking at the projections of the flood, uh, some precipitation, or uh, other aspects, you actually can also get a picture of the capacity for different types of uh, energies that are available if you want to employ uh, newer energies, whether it's like solar or any other type of energies that are um, kind of of interest for uh, the country. Uh, you could see everything here. Anybody has a, an issue seeing the critical infrastructures? We are all okay. I'll see that. So, so, so. so. is data Oh, you can also check uh, other critical infrastructures. Uh, for example, you know, uh, education, government upgrades, health services, masks. Uh, oh, that's for 2016. Or you can, yeah. okay, 2016 data was created by ADB. It was the base data that we first used. So it didn't have the information about the capacity, it just had the information about the locations. Oh, okay. So we put it there because it wasn't available data, and we thought that it might be relevant for some of the policy makers to know what was the previous data that they have used. Um, but the one that we have created is very really good. Oh, critical. So if you go to the critical infrastructure, you can actually see uh, many different type of categories like the hospitals, education, uh, mosques and such. So this was created from the satellite imagery. Uh, so some of the buildings is from the you know top. It doesn't really look like that. It might not be here. So one of the extra layers that could actually help with this kind of work is to bring that uh, on island kind of information, validate and add the uh, points that are missing here. But yesterday, one of the gentlemen was talking about the, uh, he was from the Ministry of Education. I don't think he's seen him today. He was talking about the planning for prefer, uh, preparedness for the schools and evacuation plans and all of those and stuff. Then this type of maps can also help with you know, looking at the transportation rules and try to kind of uh, bring more information from their side on their planning and uh, basically uh, mappings that they have 
to manage the disinformation because as I mentioned, one of the tools that we are bringing is that interactive option, right? To bring and upload the information into the map. So if you have the roads here, then the schools can also provide the options that they have for access to the other emergency uh, resources. Uh, go to the cost of conversion because I think, yeah. So we can go to the customer version, which is here. And uh, down here. Uh, Customize our choices. Uh, so it's much more yeah. flexible. Yeah. If you yeah. want to have more uh, access to the options and choose what you want, cost conversion is the one that you might want to use. Yeah. So in custom version, also there are four uh, uh, menu here uh, hazard, like the gratitude, you can change the hazard. The important two parts are like map layers, you can add different map layers uh, into your. Uh, database here. So if you try to click the map layers and see what are the differences it's having. So as you go for island boundary, then you have island levels and you can see the elevations. If you uh, click on the elevation and see, uh, zoom into any one of the islands uh, and see what are the elevations here. And the legend here tells us the Actually, the elevation, how high is the land uh, for the sea level? So, island is the labels are bothering, for example, you can actually uh, click off the island label um, layer if you want to work on the island and you don't want to, you don't want to see that. And then all of the island natural boundaries are coming directly from the uh, official uh, reports of the land survey authority. Yeah. And reefs and lagoon, if you want to other uh, reefs and lagoons, if they are interested in having it there, okay, very important. And uh, under social exposure, again, you have population and female population. You have already looked into it uh, in our direct part. Uh, what is interesting to see is that if you if you overlay it uh, on the top of elevation, then if you click on population and if you overlay it on the top of elevation, then you know that where people are, you know, uh, located in low elevated area. You can reduce the opacity uh, of the hazard layer, maybe uh, maybe the other elevation there and see where the population are located in the uh, low elevation area, enhance the capacity of uh, population there, increase the opacity of the population to full, and re reduce the opacity of visibility of this, you know, other layers, uh, reduce it, and then, you know, you can see for this island, for example, I can see that population are located in the comparatively low elevated area, the elevation in area where the elevation is much lower, uh, the one from the middle area, which is a bit higher. So that's how you can explore by overlaying different layers. For example, yeah, I'm in the right. So if you want to see the same area, so in the right, you see there are population located in the fringe of the island boundary. And uh, those are an area where elevation is lower than the middle of the boundary. Um, similarly, you can see the other items as well. If you just want to compare the elevation and all, then the average temperature, the hazard is zero. It's right now. And then click on the parts for change. Maybe we can go down to the left hand side. So blue and red, red and blue. The population layer. And then, yeah, you can see the population here located in the low uh, elevated area. So that's how you can do it. And the color of population. Yeah. Also with populations. But again, you, if you need to choose the map layers, uh, you have to click on map layers. And if you go to, for example, critical infrastructure here, 
and you can uh, overlay right. on the top of the elevation layer and uh, you can see the location of the uh, physical infrastructure over the elevation. Do you see in this island it is in Adu at all? Um, this is important because uh, many educational institutes, you see, and mosques are in the an area where the elevation is low. So why it is important? Because when it floods, those areas might get flooded. And according to NDMA, uh, many times the schools and mosques, they are used as a safe houses during floods. So if the areas where mosques and educational institutes are there are flooded, then it could be difficult for them for, you know, for response activities. Uh, and that, that's how decisions are needed to be taken when further development uh, is planned uh, for specific islands. So one thing that you have to also pay attention, as she mentioned yesterday, the maps are like cake style. You know, the last layer comes at the top. So when the colors are strong, it's, uh, it might cover the previous colors. So you play with opacity first to find a hydro score that can be able to see. And then if you have a strong colors or the strong, like different layers that you want to still compare. For example, you want to see the elevation, you want to see also the uh, land um, cover, then what you can do is to use the compare option. So have the elevation on one side and maybe critical infrastructure, and then have the uh, map layers on the other side, and then you can just see them right next to each other, what are the connections and basically the location. And that would also make it a little bit easier if the colors get too confusing to uh, make an estimation or comparison for them. Like this one. Sorry. You can compare two maps in the and all the land views all together. It will be easier to Uh, we also have reclaimed lands, data on reclaimed lands. Uh, again, we can we can uh, see the elevation of the area, and then we can see the reclaimed land, and we can foresee what kind of uh, risks might happen in the future. For example, this area, this one, the left right side map. Uh, if we want to see, you know. Uh, maybe flood or sea level rise, and uh, in different scenario, in customize we change the scenario using expand tool. You can try try it out with me, along with me. Then it will be easier for you to follow. You click on the right map and uh, change the hazard as sea level rise. Change the scenario as midterm SST three. And then you hide tool, and you can close this chart and see this risk in future. So you can close this hazard here to see the legend in full view, and you can correlate with the, the color here. So the color here is this level for here. And it is already over uh, in a one meter. And uh, there are some reclaimed land here. And we can see in the, in the in, in there are many areas where uh, there is uh, like, you know, low elevation areas. Uh, so reclaimed lands, uh, if not taken care of, uh, might lead to you know, flooding on those areas. Again, I mean, uh, also land elevation is important in terms of reclaimed land because if the land is higher, if, you are, if the reclaimed land is made higher and the adjacent areas are lower uh, in flood, water is going to drain out to the lower areas. So it is very important to see the different information uh, and then you know, take the decision while uh, doing this kind of work uh, in future. Keeping on mind upcoming um, any uh, hazards and hazard trends. 
Could you all do it, these things? Yeah. Any question in between? Using, comparing the maps, tools, population, different type of layers, finding the reclaimed lands, finding the other boundaries, reefs, other things. No, everybody could do it. Yeah. So now we have a uh, we have uh, we can download the maps that we have here. For example, I want to download this map. Uh, you go to expand tool, and then there is action to download. We can save it as a, uh, the data we can save as a CDS and then map we can save as PNG. Uh, currently, it uh, needs to be updated a bit more because we, we want to also add the region and the north arrow and the scale in the map. Uh, but the picture you can download as a picture uh, and use it in your presentation. Yeah. Add your own legends. Yeah. Yeah. It can be downloaded. And similarly, the chart data and tables can also be downloaded. Like the chart you see here, uh, you can you can try exploring the chart using different uh, different variable. It shows critical infrastructure exposure uh, to drought historical scenario, uh, and you can change the unit here, uh, absolute and percentage unit. Uh, the absolute in the uh, unit shows you the actual numbers and then uh, the other is percentage of number. And uh, you can also download this data from here. Here is the expand tool uh, with the download button. You can, you can also try downloading and see how it is downloading and give us a feedback of that as well. If it's downloading correctly or not, you can also try downloading. And uh, let me know if you could download and then what you see, uh, if you can see the tables and if you can see the maps or not. Can you? Melissa, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's here. Yeah, we can update you can not download and everything together. Uh, but it will be available very soon. And uh, what about the table? Is downloading? Which is. Yeah, maybe it's too light if I'm not getting one No, I can just give one task last one one scenario. So let's do one practice. So just go over the data and then we can finish the session on this. Anybody has a specific question? 
When you are looking at the elevation, one of the interesting presentations today in the rhymes, they were talking about this planning for, for example, agriculture and all. Um, like looking at the type of the soil and uh, what type of uh, crops are uh, suitable or not. So that's one of the things that I find interesting personally. If you are doing like development planning for an island that wants to increase the amount of like agriculture or keep sustainable agriculture, then you can look first of all at the elevations to see if there is any possibility of uh, salt water getting to the uh, vegetation. Uh, so if there is, then maybe you have to find a plan that in long term either create some um, basically uh, barriers or uh, change the crops to something that is more resilient. And then also looking at the temperature projection uh, of the temperature and the uh, basically draw them all and then decide what type of crops might be actually more suitable for that type of weather. In this readable, just one last task. Using the portal, you need to find out how to plan for participation uh, under what scenario for critical infrastructure in any one of the island you choose. So choose one island and then if anyone wants, I can also take a picture for you.
there's no protection there. Yes.
two kind of uh, heavy handed sessions. Um, one experience sharing, one generally a spring, and then the launch is going to be a bit late. Uh, so it's better if you have actually, you know, uh, refresh yourself and get ready for uh, those two discussions. Any, 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 any